Hi, Sean Kavanagh here with another Aussie Target training video. So in this video I'm going to do something a bit different. I'm going to run through a task data sheet and uh, set up for a competition flight as if I was sitting down for a briefing. So I've got, uh, this is actually flight 2 from the Australian National Championships back in September 2015. Uh, it's a four part task, so we've got a judge declared goal, judge declared goal, hesitation waltz, so two targets, and uh, a 3D task with a cake. Now I didn't actually fly this task, but I do have all the wind reading data, and uh, I'm going to set this up and see if I can interpret that data, you know, plan the flight the way I'd plan it. And then I'm actually waiting on an email from Matthew Scaife, who won this championships, uh, to get all his track logs so that I can have a look at it and see how the flight actually panned out for the guys. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, if my interpretation of, of what was going to happen on the morning is right, but that's uh, that's just a private game for me. Um, so we'll have a look at that in a second. So let's get in and start plugging this data in. We've got a competition map. I've got no waypoints or anything loaded on this. I mean, normally at a competition you'd be a bit more organised, but in this sort of task setting where you've got judge declared goals, you generally have to plug all this information in anyhow. Similar thing with hesitation waltzes, they're not referencing any of the uh, the goal list, so you'd have to plug all this information in manually anyhow. So the tool that I use for all that is the Waypoint Tools. Let's start off and get the CLA in, because I haven't got that on the map already. 699-2-8703, uh, there's no MMA, change that to green. So I'm using custom waypoint um, information here, so setting the color and the font size. Go to my map, make data, click on map, recenters the map and puts my CLA in. Nice thing about this tool obviously is I'm working with the same eight figure grid references that are on my task sheet as opposed to splitting out a full UTM grid and trying to put the numbers in the right spot. So. Here I put in judge declared goal. Don't worry about the task number because that all sort of makes sense as I'm flying along, but I do put in the scoring period. And because there's two judge declared goals, I'm gonna go dash one so that it's obvious which one's first. Position 7087, 8942, MMA is only 25 meters. No pressure there. Uh, we're gonna use a red marker and uh, I'll leave that the same. So make data, click on the map. There's our first judge declared goal. Second judge declared goal, scoring period finishes at 08.30. And this is the second one for the morning, so I'll put dash two, seven, six, two, zero, nine, five, zero, one, MMA, 100 meters, a bit more generous. Marker color on this one is pink, and again, click and draw. Okay, let's get some hesitation waltzes in. So, hesitation waltzes finish at 0830 as well. First one here is 7614 0004. MMA is 60 meters. Now when I'm doing this in the, it's a blue marker, when I'm doing this in the briefing, uh, like I said, I'm using a Surface Pro, so I'd have the keyboard and I'd be doing this with a mouse and keyboard, just for convenience. Uh, let's put a dash one on that, since there's two hesitation waltzes, so that's the first one. And the only other thing I've got to be aware of is because this northing here is just above the zero zero line. I need to locate that zero zero line on the map. Make sure I click on the correct side of it so it knows where to put it because I don't want to put this waypoint 100 kilometers to the south. Okay, um, next one. I don't need to change the name because this will auto increment for me just to save a bit more time. 0864 0051 uh, 75 meters. 
Yeah, so obviously if you get a list of six hesitation waltzes, you don't have to be changing the name every single time. So I've got this set up so it just automatically changes that to dash two or dash three, dash four as you put in hesitation waltzes, for example. Click on that. So then we get 0830 dash two. Final part of this task is 3D task. So we have a quick read of this. Goal must be on the northing 0300 and declared before crossing northing 0000. Okay, so there's a couple of things. I need a waypoint for the center of this. I need to also declare it with altitude. Um, so I need to pick the center of, of where this cake is and the center of that must be on this 0300 northing. So the first thing I'm gonna need is a waypoint for this. So I'm just gonna call that a cake. I'll leave that the same for the moment and I'm gonna put in 0300 don't need an MMA and we'll pick a different color for this so again make that there so now I've got a temporary waypoint for my cake sitting on that line if I go to my task rings the next thing I need to set up is the radiuses so task rings are in radius information here is in diameter so I would have to divide these by two. Uh, go into my settings here. My units are in meters, so thousand meters divided by two is five hundred. Obviously, three thousand divided by two is fifteen hundred. Five thousand twenty five hundred, and then come back to my map, select my cake waypoint, and draw my rings. So that's the temporary location of my cake got follow me turned on so that if I'm using well if I'm if I'm using the Aussie target uh, the Aussie Explorer tool where I unlock things and I move the waypoint around those rings will update and follow that waypoint the way I would actually do this in in the competition is select that I'd use the waypoint tool and around that to the one kilometer okay that's gone to the 004 line, so bring that down until we're on the 0300 line. Uh, and that way I can nudge this left and right along that line using the arrows here, uh, moving at 100 meters at a time to get the position where I want to put that. So we'll have a look at that in a second once we get the wind reading data up and, and decide what we need to do. Now the other bit of information I need here is the lines just to give myself a bit of a, a mental jog. So we needed to declare this before 0000, so we'll draw that line. And that's just for that. Um, and the other one, just to highlight it, just Again, just to remind me when I'm moving my line around. Uh, 0, 3, 0, 0. Come back here. Add and draw. So now I've got two, two lines. So when I zoom out on this map for an overview of what's going on, it's pretty apparent we're taking off from here. We're going to a judge declared goal. We're going to a judge declared goal. We've got two hesitation waltzes. We have to declare the center of this cake before we get to the first green line and the cake must be on the second green line. Straight away I'd go in, save that as a new uh, task. So now all this information is saved and, and if I need to restart the computer or bring the map up again, I can get all that back without having to enter it again. So that's taken about eight or nine minutes, nine minutes with talking um, to get all that in. So in theory, I've still got about six minutes of reading time left to, to actually start thinking about wind data. So I've got the wind reading information now. I've cheated a little bit. I've actually already imported this, but uh, if I was working off just the met sheet presented in the briefing, I'd be going through that and picking the winds that are of interest. Um, or if I've got access to, to wind reader or whatever, uh, electronically I can import those files so you know we've got the option for wind reader import and stuff like that so I've already got the wind reading for the morning taken at uh, 20 past 6 uh, sunrise 
on this uh, task data sheet, I think was saying uh, sunrise 0615. Okay, so this wind reading's just been taken after sunrise. So what I tend to do, actually just close all these down. When I first get all that wind reading information in, uh, this is a little bit slow because it's going to draw a lot of information, but it gives me a really nice overview of what's happening. So I say draw to only, I've got the scale set out to 20 kilometers, which is about the length of the flight here, I think. Um, but if I draw, if I select all, it says I can draw all that information, draw at waypoint, draw it at the CLA. You can see it starts drawing from the surface up and as it's filling in those lines, it's giving me you know, a bit of a feel as to, to generally what's happening. And uh, you, know, you can see from that on the surface, it's, it's southerly on the surface. There's a bit of right hand turn there, but not a lot actually. So it's looking like it could be a real struggle to, to get to this judge declared goal. Directors obviously set up a hesitation waltz off to the left just to make sure that there's something there um, but he might be expecting some something to happen on the surface when I see something like that one of the other tricks that I do uh, is have a look at my elevation just to get a mental picture of what's happening during the flight so I've got the elevation data set up on this map and wherever I move my mouse that elevation will be shown so we're launching at about 530 feet okay first judge declared goal is 300 feet above that at 844 back down to 560 feet, 600 feet, that one's at 620, and that's around 6700 feet. But interestingly, this is all rising ground, so this is back to 800 feet, 900 feet up around here, so uh, obviously you've got the river valley through here and a river running up here. Um, so, hmm, I haven't actually flown here, so I've got no idea what what the terrain happen, you know, does. You know, normally, obviously, you would have done practice flights, and you'd have a bit of a feel for what's going on. But I'm doing this completely blind. So maybe the director knows something. Maybe they get, you know, right hand turn. The other thing, though, if you look at this wind reading, speeds are all quite fast. So five minutes after sunrise, they've got 15 kilometers an hour on the surface. And that very quickly jumps up to 50, 60 kilometers an hour. So this is going to be a fast flight. And um, I'm presuming they did actually fly. I think because I've just grabbed this randomly. So we'll find out. Uh, but you might expect that to come down onto the surface and all straighten up. So at the moment, I suppose I'm going to set this up. And, and the way I'd be looking at this is, is I would be hoping that this is going to be achievable and I would set my flight up expecting to go to the right and, uh, and to that effect I would initially position my cake looking at that, you know, if, the, if these are my surface winds, if that's my right hand turn I would set my cake up initially over here somewhere. Just turn my task rings on so it can update it. Um, yeah, with the, the thought that, uh, that we are going to fly that sort of path. So I'll just clear all those lines, those wind lines, and now do the second part of this. Um, as they clear off, unselect all, so we'd go through and have a little bit of a look at it. So if my cake here is going to be somewhere elevation wise around 800 feet, what I tend to do is pick a surface wind. If I add 500 to that, uh, I'm going to get 1300. Add 500 to that, 1800. 2,355 k's an hour, that's honky. Uh, and in terms of spread of directions, 
that's giving me a reasonably good idea of what it looks like. And uh, we'll just put 2800 in as well. That should be the top of our cake, I think. So bottom, top of first tier, top of second tier, top of third tier. Yeah, okay. So. First judge declared goal certainly looks achievable. You know, that surface wins to the right. Now I can go to the left reasonably easily. Interesting thing will be speed. That's 30 kilometers an hour, and it looks like we've only got about 2.5k, so we're going to get there pretty quickly. Um, probably somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes. Um, but then draw that from the judge declared goal. And that's telling me that we're going to actually miss this if we don't get the right hand turn. But we should fly through here somewhere. So I do this exercise so that I've got a picture in my head of, you know, as I'm flying, what's it doing compared to what I'm expecting. So at least I've got this in my head that this is probably going to be a logger drop if we don't get any more right hand turn on the surface. Now, if it all does go to plan, we do get over to here. Again, this hesitation waltz we're going to really struggle to get to. But we're also not going to get to this one, so we may go down the middle of the two of them. Um, and it's really starting to look like my cake is going to have to be over here somewhere. Um, mm. So what that's telling me is that this could be really messy um, unless there's something magical happening and we're getting right hand turn but the thing that that I'm reading out of this is that these speeds are so fast and so low I don't know where you're gonna get the right hand turn from unless you know a really heavy inversion sets in or something like that um, it looks like they're probably gonna miss it to the left um, you may end up with your cake over here somewhere and they're all straightening up and going faster but uh, hopefully I get this email with the track file and uh, part two of this video we'll have a look at it and I'll grab the results as well actually and just see how how, it, how people went what the distances were on these tasks and uh, yeah check back for part two but uh, that's how I would go about setting up a task a little bit of how I think about it and um, yeah, how quickly I can get all that stuff in. That's taken 17 and a half minutes with talking. So obviously now I'm, I'm free to sit down during the actual briefing and listen to the briefing, listen to the Met. Uh, I'm not still trying to plug information into my computer and get this set up. So there we go. Thanks for watching.